Yo, what's going on with it once again, ladies and gentlemen, bros, women, fanboys, and fangirls, as always. Otakas and Nikki Komori's out there, and of course, people with man. This is Nintendo Sony Free 2011, aka Manny Wolverine. Of course, you guys on the rest of the intros, not just Torch Channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all the other good stuff. I'm about like four days late in this thing, even though this one's like very, very recent it's from today, but you guys are either going to see this tomorrow or Saturday by the time I record this. I'm doing this on Thursday, by the way. Anyways, oh yeah, before I begin, I know, granted, there's a lot of shit um, and shade getting thrown, a lot of um, LucasArts, and that's all good under the hood. I'm still going to go see the Star Wars um, Rise of the Skywalker movie, and I was probably going to be shitting on, getting shit on a whole bunch of times this in the next few days, because I know tomorrow's the official release day when it comes out. I know, granted, all these press releases and all these other people are going to say good shit about it. And again, they're always paid to say a lot of bunch of lies and animosity towards it. So it is what it is. Just a little, like, tidbit my overall thoughts using opinions as long as it got the action and adventure in it that's all i really give a shit about i know the story is kind of gonna end up being garbage at the end if all those leaks were true that i heard about yeah i'm gonna be a little fucking disappointed but it is what it is i'm still gonna have a good ass time no matter what i'm not gonna buy any of the merch though fuck that <laughs> i ain't buying none of the merch this time anyways um Link to the description box down below for all three of these articles I read today. I might only be able to read half of this. This is a super long ass article. It's a bunch of tweets all over the place. I heard about this almost four days ago. I still haven't got time to like sit down and talk about it, but this is like the newest one from uh, Bounty in the Comics. So it says Niche Gamer. So many people may have heard about this. This is just like what happened last year and then the month before. I remember there was a plagiarism issue that like one of the people, I don't know if they were working for Sony or not, but. He stole a lot of arts and animation concepts from a whole bunch of other places. I didn't talk about that one because I was already like a month late to that. So I ain't talking about it. So nobody's going to watch that video. <laughs> Niche Gamer admits to issue an apology for plagiarizing Gamatsu. I also call it Gamitsu instead of Gamatsu. I don't know why. Content. This comes from um, Spencer Bukali from um, Mounting the Comments. So I've got to get credit for to do that. So yeah, let's begin this article. So it's Niche Gamer. A video game news outlet which touts itself as an alternative to the mainstream video gaming press has issued an apology and admitted that the site has plagiarized Gamatsu's content, particularly translating Japanese presses for years. Following an initial denials and a lie attributed to the plagiarism, an non existent ghost wire, the, accusa the accusations first surfaced on the week when Sal Romano, editor in chief of Gamatsu, began. Accusing Niche Gamer of regularly publishing Gamatsu's console without sourcing, he provided multiple links comparing to his original work and Niche Gamer's post. Yeah, you guys can read all the tweets. I'm not reading any of the tweets, so links down below. If I was able to go past 15 minutes, I'll probably read all the tweets, but <laughs> time is of the essence. I can't really spend too much time today, unfortunately. So yeah, there goes all the little crazy dramatic tweets that Gamatsu was giving accusations to Niche Gamer. I'm not supporting either one. It is what it is. Both of those um video gaming journalist companies got their own fucking um beefs to deal with on their own time. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of any of that fucking crazy ass drama. It really, really sucks that Gamatsu ended up being plagiarized so many times, but and it got a lot of their work stolen from Niche Gamer. If that is a fucking thing, that's absolute bullshit that that happened. I'm not saying that it's a lie, but it's a really, really fucked up situation for them to have the fucking nerve to like steal another company products or article. Articles and gaming journalists, um, information from someone else. That's extremely the lowest of the low there, man. All right, so uh, let's move on forward if we can. Responding to these accusations from the initial official Niche Gamer account that is now deleted on the Twitter thread, <clears throat> the site's owner, founder, editor in chief, Brandon Osarelli or Osarelli, I don't know if I'm even saying that right, initially identified the perpetrators as a quote a ghostwriter unquote. And claim that this is anonymous contributor has since <clears throat> been terminated. It says we've we've investigated accusations for recent content <clears throat> on our site to Gamatsu. We recognize similarities with some of the content has been generated by Ghostwire does as a contributor from our website <clears throat> on some content. This writer has since been terminated. <laughs> That's extremely fucked up that that happened. There's probably a couple other writers over there for Niche Gamer have been stealing a lot of other people's information there. Oh, man. That is such a bitch to have a legacy like that staying on your, like, um, video game journalist company like that. Company. Company. 
like that, you're gonna like, <laughs> you're gonna break a lot of people's trust and promises with that, man. Really, if their Twitter or Instagram like following goes really, really low, they know that um, this is the thing that screwed the pooch there with their company very, very badly. And um, I'm not gonna say destroyed people's livelihoods of making money and like finances and stuff like that, but it might have. I don't know. I'm gonna keep going lower on my phone because it's taking too long. This fucking um, my computer over here. Da, 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 da. Right, this claim was soon ref refuted by Romano, who recalled that niche gamer and Orso Orsorelli had a history of denial when they accused of they were accused of plagiarizing, specifically towards Romano after he kindly approached them about the same issue in 2015. And there's more extra tweets. I'm just gonna keep reading the rest of this on my phone. Um, da, 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 da. On December 18th, Osorelli issued a lengthy apology on his gamer and admitted that he lied that a ghostwriter, that a ghostwriter statement, and claimed that the issue is a complete oversight and part of, <clears throat> and on my part, mostly due to sheer overwork and lack of delegation. Wow, that was a really long thing. All right, so I'm just gonna read this quickly. For those unaware, we've recently had accusations from. Uh, this thing is going moving all over the fucking place. From an yeah, from another site, Gamatsu plagiarizing here in each gamer. While all of the claims are true, regardless, I take full responsibility and have already removed any legitimate suspects. Legitimately suspect content said from the article and are looking yeah, are looking at other articles as well. This is this was a complete oversight on my part, mostly due to sheer Overwork and lack of delegation. I'm not gonna lie, I was really stretched thin. My time between my day job, my family, and running Niche Gamer as a second job. There have been many times I neglected my family so we can make embargo deadlines. My small team has asked me to hire more people for too long, and by postponing, I simply made things worse. When the accusations came out, I panicked and lied that the ghostwriter statement had hit a few replies on Twitter. It was wrong, and it was a breach of trust. I'm sorry, this does not reflect me on my moral standards. High moral standards of our staff for every single day. Our ethics that drive these came forward. I've been managing to edit News Gamer publicly, publishing things on News Gamer for mostly by myself for some time now. And from all the staff reviewers, the day-to-day -day content from our staff and our editorials and everything. I'm exhausted, and day, day job takes up more, most of my time. And I have been running the site for all of my in all of my free time this doesn't excuse how i left this and become such a problem but i'm truly sorry to Gamatsu and its owner style my staff and all of you to our fans our renders readers not renders now let's get into the other shit um Osorelli concluded his apology by announcing that he will be quote stepping away from managing a front-end content a niche gamer will be taking more of a back end role with the site of focusing back ends tasks while also working on our service upgrades and new sites and features and more. Romano responded with a lengthy lengthy Twitter thread questioning many of the statements that made by apology before ultimately stating that now he considers apology to be hollow. Niche Gamer has since announced various changes to their staff including Ryan Pierce's new position as managing editor despite state standing accusations by Romano that Pearson has also plagiarized full Releases he translated. Wow. <laughs> All right. So uh, overall thoughts, views, and opinions. Plagiarism. I don't. I know it's like a real, real, extremely huge illegal thing. I don't think it's as bad as like you know when it comes to somebody. Oh, somebody had a murder or a death in the family or something as bad. But it's a real, real big ending career. We already saw this last with that whole Philip Muner situation. I need people to know about that. This I'll leave the link down below. Maybe I may or may not. It depends. It's absolute bullshit this shit happened to them. It's really, really fucked up. Um, the second they do this in the video game industry, they get ousted. They pretty much go, go to the Badlands, the banishment. They're like exempted, not exempted, but like completely permabanned from ever doing a video game fucking um, job ever again. They're pretty much fucked. They will never be able to work in that industry ever to fuck again. Once they're out of that industry, they're done, period. They're, their career is dead in the gaming industry. They're out. But anyways, um, let's go to the other two. Hopefully, I can get to it on point as quick as I can. I'm just going to read it from my phone real quick just in case it doesn't show it here. <clears throat> Shiny Pokemon Go update. Gibble and limited time, easier catches. I'm not, I may not be able to read this whole thing. Hopefully, I can. There it is. This comes from Chris Burns from Slash Gear. Hopefully, it's nice and quick. 
So it says, could, today you are going to want to head out to Pokemon Go with your expectations. All Pokemon Go fans out here, so listen to this shit. Uh, what ex expectations lit for Shiny Gibbo? Gibbo. Gibbo. Now that you're actually be able to find one, since these Pokemon are practically common, right? <laughs> uh, -uh, uh Not always. Da -da 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 -da. The release of Shiny Gibbo in Pokemon Go means that Shiny or no Shiny is far more common than the normal encounter. The important thing to remember is that, <laughs> okay, important thing, da, 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 da. when it comes to shiny Pokemon releases, there are, is no one and nothing in time to place to get a shiny, shiny Gibble. One of the Pokemon in the game is that, da, 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 da. this isn't the likely the time that they will release special birthday hat Pikachu or other times they released other Pokemon. Da, 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 da. Pokemon with special one-time fast moves only. During this initial slot with Gibble is available as a shiny Gibble Pokemon. It'll be more common than any other point in the near future. This Pokemon will be available for eggs. And you'll probably want to head out and incubate as many eggs as you can in as short of amount of time as possible. It's likely that shiny Gibble will be lasting until the first year of November. Or excuse me, the first of the year. But it'll best be knocked. Best to knock this one out as part of your team as soon as possible. Anyways, you'll... You'll forget what's going on during Christmas break, or you'll get twice as much one, twice as much walking while you eat cookies, right? Oh yeah, and all this um, information comes from League Duck. So it says there's also a research breakthrough and a bit of action going on right now. With a set of legendary Pokemon appearing in shiny form, you can earn either an encounter with Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, Kyogre, or Groudon, and have a chance to be shiny Pokemon when your opportunity is to catch it. To catch appears. This will last until 3 p.m. CST time, Wednesday, January 1st, 2020. Shiny Legendaries graphics via available Leak Duck. Holler at Leak Duck. <laughs> and that's old already. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much self-explanatory there. Overall thoughts, views, and opinions. I didn't get any of these Legendaries as Shiny. I hope to fucking God I get at least a Shiny Groudon or Shiny um, Moltres or Zapdos or any of those bad boys. All right, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, um, I had to, like, pause the video there really quick because, um, got this delivery thing from uh, Amazon or whatever. It wasn't mine. It was one of my roommates or whatever. So apologies. I had to pause the video there really fast. <laughs> Hopefully that's not a fucking nuisance. I apologize if it is. Anyways, um, Pokemon Go will let you play with your monsters playing soon. Pal soon. This is a huge ass mind breaker here, man. The game's buddy adventure feature is coming 2020, says Nancy, which is a lie. Because <laughs> at the time we were this recording, it came out yesterday. On the 18th of 2019 of December. So, uh, <laughs> fortunately, um, Engadget, you had a uh, little bit of your articles on. This comes from Egon, Igor Bonafaki, however you say that. Bonafassive, however you, I have no idea how you even pronounce that. I'm only going to be able to read the first article, the links to the whole thing down below. Pokemon Go developer Niantic is close to putting the finishing touches on a feature that will, mo will likely fulfill a long standing wish for a lot of games fans. By 2020, which is a lie, late 2019 and early 2020, Niantic says you'll be able to play and feed your <laughs> feed your favorite Pokemon in augmented reality thanks to the Buddy Adventure feature studios plan to add to this game. You'll also be able to see your monster pals follow you through the game's map. Niantic says that each Pokemon has different quirks, which will translate to different behaviors. This close, the closer you'll get to your favorite Pokemon, the more in-game perks you'll unlock. For instance, to the Ultra Buddy level in your virtual pal, you. Your pal will be directly will direct you to the nearby points of interest. You can find the start of the process in bounding the Pokemon by feeding berries to them. Hey, overall thoughts, views, and opinions. As much as I do love this feature in the future, it's gonna scare the fuck out of me. I might not play Pokemon Go anymore for certain, not religious reasons or any of that shit. It's gonna send fucking people to hell and all that garbage. But they're gonna add 5G to this game probably another year or two. It's where virtual reality. I heard something about glasses virtual reality. I'll leave the link to this. Very famous Pokemon, Poco, or Pokemon Go YouTuber content creator named Pokemon Master Holly. I want to met a couple months ago, early this year. Very cool ass, badass chick. Absolutely amazing. I got nothing bad to say about that chick at all. She's amazing as hell. Anyways, um, I will say this. It is going to scare the fuck out of me. Because I know 5G and 6G is going to end up like having a lot of health reasons, health concerns. So it might be one of the main reasons I don't play Pokemon Go anymore. Because I don't want to like, you know die at 35, 40 years old. I want to try to live to 70, 80 years old if I can. 
That's all I gotta say for now. Peace out once again, ladies and gentlemen, bros, women, fanboys, and fangirls. As always, until talking, you can money stay to more video game anime news, non news, and internet news. And that's it. Peace.